Reaper ship chasing me from the stern, Port Merrick directly in front of me at the bow, and me carrying this chest of fortune just recently stolen from the clutches of the Reaper ship. But wait, wasn't I the Reaper here? Turns out there's more to the story than it seems. Our adventure started out like any other, chasing down a running Reaper across the map in Sea of Thieves. Having spawned in its sanctuary, we had traveled all the way nearly to the Devil's Roar when I saw shiny glints appearing in the water. I was in disbelief. This player was literally dumping their loot overboard in the hopes that I wouldn't continue the chase. And they were right. Because I'm a dumb pirate who forgot that you can now dive under the ocean and teleport to a different server. So I resigned myself to picking up their loot. After playing a little bit of loot organization frenzy, I decided it'd be best to put up a reaper flag of my own, so off the ancient spire I went. After putting up the reaper emissary, I saw my first target in the distance, an emissary sloop passing near Crook's Hollow. I had a few fireworks on hand, so I thought why not fire them off, give them the impression that their doom was approaching, or something along those lines. I don't know. Personally, I just think fireworks aren't used often enough, so have some here. Again, we traveled quite the distance across the map. It's like no one wants to be around a reaper for some odd reason. Fancy that. Finally, they attempted a cutoff near Ancient Gold Fortress, but we were ready. Landing several deck shots that left the enemy crew disoriented, we were able to leap across and onto the enemy ship, taking out both players and proceeding to play defense to ensure the sink. One of the enemy crew managed to get me down to near death, but after quite the lucky blunderbuss through staircase, the ship was sunk and the loot was ours. At least, that's what you would think if you were new to the game. But this is Sea of Thieves, and any veteran of the game would tell you that the loot isn't yours until it's sold. So it was no surprise that our friends from the sloop were approaching, just as we were about to engage with a different ship. Unfortunately, I had to let that prey go in order to make sure this wouldn't become a 2v1 situation. Our returning sloop friends were not at all pleased with having their loot taken from them, and it showed in the way they were playing. Instead of pressing their numerical advantage, since they already knew I was a solo player, they chose to keep their distance and tried their hand at naval. Me. I love me some naval. So I relished the opportunity to take down their mast with just cannonballs and then give them the old death spiral. One of them either jumped off or fell off from their ship and the remaining crew wasn't able to keep up with repairs and that was that. Our friends were 0-2. With my prey now quite a distance away, I thought it best to make my way over to Reaper's hideout to turn in, so toward the center of the map we went. Unfortunately, we wouldn't have a harpoon rowboat on our side, so the turn into Reapers was going to be slow and tedious. And on top of that, having the grade 5 Reaper emissary still up was definitely going to put a target on my back. But to my surprise, we were left alone and able to turn everything in without disruption. So then this is where I made my first mistake and decided to press my luck entering the Fleet of Fortune world event that was right next to us near Reaper's hideout. I'm not saying it was a mistake to do because I was solo, but because I had no real supplies of my own. I was going to have to rely on the skeleton ships to feed me. And just as soon as they came, two skeleton sloops went, affording me the opportunity to grab their storage crates. And now it was time for the big boy. But while facing off with the flagship galleon, I made my second mistake and wasn't paying attention to my surroundings. Without realizing it, another sloop had arrived on my server and decided to make a run at the Fleet of Fortune and me in the process. I hadn't checked the map in ages, so you can only imagine my surprise when I see sails on the horizon and go, that's not a skeleton ship. In my panic, now it was time for me to commit my third and final mistake. Attempting to get a one ball on at least one of the crew members, I ignored the fire that was on my ship and more disastrously, the direction my ship was heading in until it was too late. Come to find out that Reaper's hideout does not have all access parking for a sloop. And with that, I was down for the count. Of course, I gave my GG's to my opponent, as you should do when a fight GGs, is done. Guys, GGs. Except, my fight wasn't done. I had spawned in very close, surprisingly close, and as I sailed my ship toward the event again, I came up with a plan. I knew the Skelly Galleon was close to sunk. If I could just take it down before that sloop engaged with it, I might have a chance to steal away the loot, including the Chest of Fortune. Took a few shots and, yep, Skelly Galleon was down for the count. The Reaper Sloop had caught up quickly, however, and now it was going to be a race. Which one of us was going to be able to snag the loot? This is when my luck finally took a turn for the better, and I bagged one of the crew. With the other enemy focusing their attention on their ship, 
I saw an opportunity and took it, harpooning every single piece of loot I could before they recovered. Now it was time to make a getaway, but did I get the chest of fortune from this event? Success! Now we needed to find a place to turn this in at. Since we were no longer flying our Reaper flag, any outpost would do just fine. And because we were heading in a westerly direction, I chose Port Merrick as a destination. But the Reaper ship was still hot on our tail, and there was no guarantee I was going to be able to pull this off. I knew I was at a numerical disadvantage, and this time, this crew was well coordinated and able to pull off better naval tactics than our previous opponents. So it wouldn't serve me well to get involved in a standoff. Plus, as the one who had the chest of fortune, it was my potential advantage to give away if I didn't focus all my efforts on ensuring that piece of loot was turned in. I could tell they knew this too, since they devoted a lot of their time trying to snipe me to the ferry while the chase was on. But this is where strategic navigation comes into play. We're near Wanderer's Refuge, and the thing about Wanderer's is, it has these patches of land that jut out near the ends of the islands, along with a slight curve. If you're not careful and paying attention during a chase, you might find yourself along the inner seam of the island and unable to gain any wind advantage while your opponent is able to use the island to their advantage and their ship's harpoons to make quick turns and retake the wind, increasing the distance between the two vessels. Which is exactly what I did. They did make a great attempt though, hitting my mast once and nearly boarding my ship if I didn't have blunder bombs at the ready. But now we were able to gain a bit of distance and return our heading back towards Port Merrick. And so here we are, right where we began. On our way to Port Merrick, Reaper ship chasing just behind, chest of fortune in hand. Are we going to be able to make this turn in? It's coming down to the wire. One wrong move and we'll lose. That's why I decided against selling it at Sovereigns. Even though I approached from that angle, it would be too obvious. Instead, I risked it and jumped off ship, climbing up the ladder and heading toward the Gold Hoarder's Bank. Let's go! A successful chest of fortune steal. Jeez, fellas. Or recovery? I'm not sure. I gave my foes the GGs. It was a hard fought win. Got unlucky with the respawn there. Afterward, we even spent some time talking and playing a shanty together nice while I danced around a few cannonballs. We started our adventure chasing after a sloop and ended it Not quite, being almost. chased while coveting the precious That's loot we had in our hold. That's the life of a Sea of Thieves pirate. I'm sure you all know this, but that sort of spontaneity is the reason why I can't put this game down. Until next time, this is John Bardcore signing off, saying so long and take care.